Hello, Dr. Penwell. Hello, Magidi. Hi, Dad. So, as I said earlier on, we are in lockdown in France and other countries throughout the world. What's going on? We thought we had the control over those microorganism viruses. We thought we had the control over those microorganism bacteria. And this coronavirus is just changing the rules and is enticing us to think um, the rules of the game, to think it over again. So what's going on? Do you, what is your view on that? And uh, could you share with us your insight, Dad? Well, thank you for the question, because I think this question is also uh, back in the head of uh, many of uh, our viewers. And uh, it's a good opportunity to uh, really uh, create a big picture. The first thing we have to understand is that uh, as uh, Western uh, people, most of us, we are always thinking in terms of uh, enemies, in terms of war, in terms of weapons, in terms of aggressivity. And uh, I would say this is typical, uh, especially of the uh, American set of mind, you see, <laughs> weapons everywhere. You have, oh, is, it, is it American or is this just Western mindset? It's Western, but I would say it's the Far West, you know, <laughs> because we have controls over uh, arms. We are not allowed uh, to have uh, weapons in Europe, in America. This is the second amendment of the constitution, weapons everywhere. And no president uh, uh, dares touch to this uh, amendment. So. Let's yeah, let, let, not go into political <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. a burning question, but it, it's, a, it's, it's a fact, you know, it's a fact. So we have this set of minds where we think in terms of opposition, whereas in the mother of medicine, which is called biology, we want to understand the functioning of life. And life is functioning at a molecular basis first. And just after the molecular basis, you have the basis of the, the cell. And at this cell level, we know that life begins with bacteria. And life begins with bacteria that are going to change the face of the planet from an inert a piece of rock, <laughs> it becomes a green and blue planet. And it is only these microorganisms living in the oceans that will enable the evolution of life and the appearance of life on the surface of the planet. So here I'm speaking of a story which is uh, back uh, 3.5 uh, billion years ago. So life we remain, even if we disappear, we have a human species, life will be always there. Okay, so what's, so what's the, the question yeah. of... Now, what's on, interesting on. here is, I, just I'm going to shortly introduce you, you, a medical doctor, specialized in aromatherapy, medical aspect for over 40 years, and instead of just jumping into a recipe, you are telling us, first, change your mindset. And instead of being at war against viruses, bacteria, start to understand that those living beings, they are living beings, maybe not the viruses, but we are here thanks to them. So you are like tracing back to understand where do you come from and where are we heading, right? Exactly. You know, when we study medicine, uh, we study by different fields. And one aspect in the study of medicine in the fundamental sciences, we call it embryology. And to study embryology means we want to study the history. The, uh, any situation you uh, can state has a long history behind it. And the history of life is linked with bacteria and viruses. And here I want to pinpoint an important difference. You know that in my teaching, we speak all words of matter, energy, inf information. Yeah. And, and you are going to understand this close relationship. Bacteria are more related, more linked, more connected with the matter 
and the energy aspect. You know that everything needs to be recycled. When we die, at one point or another, we, uh, animals, uh, dead leaves, uh, whatever it is, or when you, you uh, uh, secrete uh, all the substances from your body, everything needs to be recycled. This is the matter aspect. There is also energy aspect. Thanks to the photosynthetic bacteria, the sun, the light of the sun is uh, tapped mm -hmm. and is converted into chemical energy. So the matter and the energy aspect, bacteria. Now, when you come to the information, as you know, viruses, they go into the nucleus of the cell and they can bring pieces of DNA, pieces of information into the cell. And so the viruses have played a major role in the evolutionary process on life on planet Earth. And so thank you, the, viruses. Thank you, viruses, right? Yeah. It's obvious that in 99% in of cases, whether we speak of bacteria or whether we deal with viruses, they have a vital role first in the existence of life, in all the recycling processes of matter, in tapping the energy, converting it into a chemical bonds for the bacteria, and transferring the information aspect, which is the uh, famous uh, genetic code, and this is most important part of the work of viruses. It's not the only one, but most important. So we see this kind of a division, matter, energy, and information. In a spiritual term, you would say that viruses are more important, because the information is linked with the spiritual world, than bacteria, which connect them more with matter and energy. When I speak to you, Magali, you know, I used to say, I speak 10 times more to the bacteria in your gut. But now with the new knowledge, I say when I speak to you, I speak 100 times more to the viruses in your gut. Mm -hmm. Because you have 10 times more viruses than bacteria. And because you have 10, 10, 10 times more bacteria in your gut than all the cells which make up your organism, you see that the hierarchy is clear. Mm. When you speak of the genomes of the bacteria and the genomes of the viruses, you understand that this is immensely multiplied. So you are not just you, meaning the cells that you have received from mom and from dad, you are also these external beings, which now are included deeply into your systems and first of all into your whole digestive system, but not just that. And there you find viruses plus bacteria. And mm. they play a major role, especially from the immunological aspect, immune defenses, but also from energy and from psychological aspects. So this is what you are, this is what we are, we uh, as human beings and also the animals with whom we live on this planet. Mm. That's, that's interesting. Now that, that's a key point, but I've never thought of linking bacteria with the matter and energy and linking viruses with the information because as soon as you have this kind of uh, clarification, then you're going to know how to use your tools and your tools are for us essential oils. I've never seen that anywhere. So I think that's really a key major point. Thank you so much for that. And so the beneficial role the favorable function, the positive influence of all these external uh, beings which are internalized in you uh, is, uh, I would say in English, outweigh far more their possible negative influence or their pathological uh, capacities. So we have really to put things into mm -hmm. the right perspective. If we understand that first, we have the first advantage of becoming confident. We are confident that we have the power to overcome almost any disease with this internal strength we have, our own cells, and all these beings which are there first of all to protect mm. us and not to attack us. So here we, you're working on the empowerment concept. 
we are not we are not just um, at the mercy of the viruses and bacteria, but we have this inner strength and we have this empowerment. So we have the right and we have the ability to answer back, if not fight back, right? Sure. Mm. sure. A question of respect, understanding and respect. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that I am a, a stupid person. I know biology. <laughs> and uh, if I tell you, Magali, all the dogs are nice. <laughs> and uh, then you come back to me, and you have no hands because uh, a pit bull, <laughs> he has a. Uh, uh, oh, is that well? Bitten you. Yeah. yeah. So you say uh, that was a lie. No, there are a very small proportion in the world of bacteria and a very small proportion in the world of viruses, which indeed can be harmful. But understand that this is the very small proportion, okay? Many people in the world of natural medicine, they say and they repeat and they write and they teach a sentence, which if any of my students says it, is a, a sentence of uh, not uh, passing the examination. This sentence is the following one. I say it in French, then I translate. Le terrain est tout, le microbe n'est rien. In English, I would say the breeding ground of the disease is everything and the microbe is nothing. So understand that the word everything and nothing or always and never in physics, and I would say not in quantum physics, but in the everyday physics, it could have a meaning. I say if, if I uh, uh, let it down, it will go on the soil, not in the air. In biology, never always uh, and as i said um, um, everything and nothing it has no meaning okay you have always exceptions so the pathogenicity is the exception and we have to know it and we have to get prepared and to get prepared in a way which is in tune with the laws of nature the problem of medicine is that it is extremely tight, uh, narrow-minded. First of all, they focus on what they say, the external gestures, which is something important, but it's not everything. And then they focus, I mean modern medicine, on, on finding a specific answer. One answer with a vaccine as a prevention, another answer as a molecule, which targets this specific virus or this specific bacteria. Which can be useful in certain cases. Of course, it can be useful. The problem is that this is the only perception. Whereas we have a global perception. We say in English, it is a set or a system. And in a set, you have subsets and then sub subsets, et cetera, et cetera. And we can understand that the position of medicine is a subset in the immense set of the potential that we have in order to have the right answers in the question of pathological microbiology. And to focus on only one subset and to exclude all the other subsets which have their worth and have proven their abilities is from a scientific point of view, not just, uh, I would say, an error, but it's also a fault because then we cut ourselves from immense resources that come from the world of nature itself. Mm -hmm. Just think of one thing. There is, apart from the antibiotics, there is a solution to treat bacterial infections, which is the use of viruses, viruses themselves. We call mm -hmm. them phages. We have mm -hmm. understand the phage. <laughs> Bacteriophage in French, are the viruses which attack bacteria. So instead of thinking antibiotic, 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 you have solutions outside of the world of the antibiotics, which can come from the world of viruses themselves, and that can come also from other worlds, in particular from the world, the vast world of plants, which mm -hmm. we call herbalism, or in French we say phytotherapy, with multiple answers, and here I'm just 
I'm just speaking of aromatic molecules, but many, many, many kinds of categories or families of molecules from the world of plants, which have evolved to find answers and answers which are global because the plant is attacked by viruses. It is attacked by bacteria. It is attacked by parasites. It is attacked by, by fungi. And the intelligence of the plant is much more important than the intelligence of we animals. And you know why, Magali? Yeah, you're going you to tell me. You're going to tell me. Yeah, because the plant is uh, anchored in the soil by its roots. Mm -hmm. We can uh, fight, we can uh, flee. We, we have right, many I, I understand. Right. The plant is there, the poor plant is there. So it is obliged to become mm -hmm. so intelligent that the chemical response to the aggressions of bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites is highly evolved and we as intelligent, even the animals by intuition and instinct, they know which plants they have to, to eat, to uh, get rid of parasites, to struggle against viruses. We call this the uh, ethnopharmacology because these uh, pharmacologues, they go into remote countries and they see that these people have no scientific knowledge and they know exactly which plant they should use. And they have seen this with apes, you know, with uh, the uh, anthropoid uh, monkeys. And even you go to the world of ants or bees or whatever, you see that the solution lies first and foremost in the world of this chemistry of plants who have been obliged and forced by their strict Im Im immobilized position to evolve into the chemical answers. This is that's interesting. You know, do you know this this idea that because I can't move, because I'm in prison, because I'm enslaved in a specific area, so I have to develop my inner chemistry. And this is also true if you look at enslavement. People when they were like with chains, they couldn't move. They had to develop. A, a whole new strategy communicating with the body, for example. So I can see here a parallel that when you are, you can't move, you have to be innovative in a, in a way. Sure, if not, you die. So you don't want to die. The purpose of life is life itself. So you have mechanical answers, you have movement answers, energy answers. So this is the world of uh, the movement in physics. And then you have the world of chemistry, and it, it's also important to understand the world of information, as you said, the different mm -hmm. ways of communicating uh, uh, songs, etc. Because uh, it's always the same process: matter, energy, information. Information. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so my my yeah my initial question was um, how have we reached such a, such a stage? Like uh, you know, we are in lockdown and uh, we don't have the tools to fight back this virus. We have to wear masks. And, how did we reach such a stage? Some people say it's just normal and has always been this way and these are full cycle and there will be new viruses that have nothing to do with ecology or pollution. It has been this way, like uh, it has always been this way, but you don't necessarily share this vision, right? No. Um, the world in which we live now has nothing to do with the world that was before, I would say. Uh, it's the 19th century, then comes the 20th century. And with the 20th century comes, a, well, well, I would say the industrial revolution started before, of course, in England, but it became uh, uh, generalized all over the planet, basically with the 20th century. And we have created conditions of living which are totally abnormal. You see the concentration of millions and millions and millions of people in uh, small spaces like mm. big cities. Is it normal? No, it's not. Nature does not intend that. Do you think it is normal to be uh, in Sydney and uh, let's say uh, 20 hours later the, to be uh, in another continent? It's not normal. <laughs> you can uh, nowadays uh, bring any disease from one point of the planet to the extreme other point of the planet in the same way as you bring information from uh, the remotest place of the planet instantaneously with the web. And all this is totally new. It has advantages, it has disadvantages like anything. And we are normally 
sufficiently intelligent in order to take the good parts and to get rid of the bad parts. But this takes an effort, it takes a decision. One element which is uh, very important in the uh, weakness that we state now, not just the weakness, but the craziness of our defense system, our immune system, is the generalization of the use of antibiotics. And not just to struggle against bacteria, which is normally their field of action, but we have put antibiotics in all the, the foods that we give to the animals to make them become fatter and bigger and make more money. And this has created a lot of resistance of the bacteria. And it means that we have now new diseases. I'm not speaking here of viral diseases, but already of bacterial diseases that we fought. We are totally overcome uh, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, uh, uh, Syphilis, etc. And now we see that they emerge again because of our own behavior. This yeah. kind of focusing only on the uh, antibiotic answer or response to the bacterial infections. And the fact that we have used antibiotics for purposes, which are mainly to make more money and not really to uh, help the health and uh, the uh, sanity mm -hmm. of the biosphere, is at the root of uh, many problems we are facing now with the craziness and the weakness of the human immune system and also the animal immune system. So the situation we are facing is because we have, we have this narrow vision just targeting the enemy and we have forgotten this like big vision which integrates all the ecosystem right that's yeah. the weakest point the weakest link you know at, at the time when Gatfusi uh, was uh, using essential oils in australia there were the same discoveries they were using eucalyptus and tea tree they were very involved in the medical side of essential oils, exactly like France. This is why Australia and France have a very close relationship mm -hmm. in terms of the history of essential oils. But it was at the time, exactly when uh, Gatfosse coined the term aromatherapy in France, that Fleming discovered penicillin. I, I like to have this kind of parallels. You have France and England, France essential oils, England antibiotics, France and Australia essential oils. Mm -hmm. And then the production on an industrial level of antibiotics took place in America in 1942 during World War II. And then antibiotics invaded and pervaded the entire biosphere. And also the destruction of the soil, of the humus of the soil, which is mainly made with billions of bacteria took place because of all these kind of uh, pesticides, herbicides, mm. uh, chemical fertilizers. At the same time, we destroy our internal uh, bio uh, microbiote, and it, we destroy through agriculture the microbiote of the soil, uh, offering to the populations foods which are deprived of the very life which comes really from all the work done by the bacteria. Mm. And here you have the roots of the current situation we are facing now. Even in a country like the United States of America, they big start to stating that, uh, you know, the uh, span of life, it was always increasing, increasing. Now we reach a point where it starts to okay. go down because mm -hmm. all the degenerative diseases and also the new infectious diseases that emerge. And this is only and solely because of uh, our wrong behavior. We have to understand, to acknowledge and to return to the sources of life and health, which come only from nature. So you are saying that we are destroying Mother Earth. Mother Earth is endowed with bacteria. If we kill those bacteria, we also kill our Mother Earth inside, which is our microbiote. And there's a strong link between those two. Kill your Mother Earth, kill your microbiote, and you will see emerging like viruses and bacteria. So it's about going into understanding these big cycles of life. So what can we do? What can we do? Which essential oils can I take? That's not what you want to tell us, right? <laughs> no, it's not just a matter of essential oils. I know. No, this is the point of my teaching. I know you are, yeah. you are pulling my leg. <laughs> I am. So we have, to we have to return to nature, mother nature, you see. Essential oils 
have their role, and their role can be essential in acute situations, or also in chronic situations, but in different way. But basically, as I already explained to our French uh, viewers, the first thing, because we always say, what should I do? And I say, no, what should I stop to do first? You know, if my, my uh, food is made of uh, the McDonald's, or <laughs> the fast food, is it a real food for mankind? Yes, it's not. I mean, what do I eat? Uh, how do I breathe? How do I exercise? What do I think? Okay, if the answers to these four questions are wrong ones, I'm doing the wrong things, even before thinking of any kind of uh, aromatic molecule or essential oil, I, sure. plan, I have to correct everything I am able to correct. I mean, if I live in a polluted city, okay, I can change the air, but if I'm a smoker, first I begin by stopping my smoking addiction or my, uh, you know, vapot, va va uh, <laughs> whatever mm. you call it. Uh, all the things I can work on, I have to work on. And once I have done that, so suppressing the negative influences, I see the positive influences. I think in the right way, I put in the good emotions. I have the mm. movement in my life. I know how to breathe. I have the right kind of food. And then, only then, the good plants and possibly the good essential oils. But don't forget the word of plants, which is immensely important for us. So you see, it's this global approach which characterizes my position as a biological medical doctor. Sure. So you, you are telling us it's not about what shall I do, but what shall I stop doing, right? First, and once I stop the negative, the positive, well, the positive comes from my own behavior. I, I am my friend or am I my fool or my enemy? Okay. Mm. So. I mean, let's not be foolish. I'm mm -hmm. not here to promote uh, the sales of any essential oils, like, you know, these companies who say, there is an essential oil for everything and for anything. No, I mean, there are solutions, intelligent solutions. In these intelligent solutions, possibly there is the role for essential oils, for plants, alongside many other possibilities. I, my position is not the position of a vendor, is the position of an educator, as it is also your role, Magali, as bring my message to this world where the world of a business has taken the upper hand over the world of intelligence and sanity. So let's put things into perspective. Once we have done that, and only then are we allowed to go in a global intelligence with plants and essential oils. But this is mm. the further step, not the first step. So let's get ready to enter a new world, a clever world, and not into a warrior ma matrix, but a peaceful matrix. That's the key, would you say, your key message? I think so. I think uh, if, if they get to this point where they understand the core of my message and my experience and my whole life, it is a really a change in the paradigm. If we don't change the paradigm, you are just looking at uh, this uh, essential oil, we are doing the same uh, process as they do in uh, pharmacological medicine. Okay. We are beyond that. Okay. Change your paradigm, change your mindset first, right? It doesn't prevent us after to go into all the details, but we have created the big picture. Sure. And in the big picture and the new state of mind, the new paradigm, we will find answer, answers much more powerful and efficient and if we use the same state of mind, an essential oil to kill this, an essential oil to do that. It doesn't work that way. This is holism in, in the best of its possibilities. I love holism. And thank you very much, Dad, for sharing your insights. And we'll have more talks coming soon. Thank you very Where's much. And, and please don't forget to subscribe onto my channel, Magali Penuel. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>